Hello, Mixed Net Cases. This is Nuke Joss. And today we're going to be talking about how to use your geekiness for self-care. With me today... Hi, I'm Dr. Tech. Wait, that's not true. Not a doctor. Not the medical kind. Or the other kind. Or, or the other kind, that's true. <laughs> um, things are often a little intense and some people may be feeling things really intense these days and so i kind of wanted to do a little bit of an uplifting episode and tech and i decided to start talking about how we use our geekiness for self-care how to take care of yourself through your passions you cannot take care of anyone else or anything if you do not take care of yourself first yes. and this is something that everyone overlooks uh, whether you're at work, at home, wherever, it's that, oh, I'll get to my things later. I have to do all of these other things first. Yep. And you tend to ignore yourself or your own personal things like, oh, I have to clean the rest of the house. I'll clean my room later. Mm -hmm. And then y your room looks like a garbage dump in the Philippines, you know, <laughs> to use a, a, a phrase from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nine, nine. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's the old adage that we hear when we get on an airplane. You have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you can help anyone else. Oh, absolutely. And we know this intellectually. We know this. And yet we we don't do it because we don't feel it. And it feels selfish to take that time for yourself first. Yep. And then and then you end up getting stuck. Yeah. You know, six months down the road, you're having a complete mental break. You're in the hospital for, you know, a complete meltdown. You've got other physiological uh, side effects that are starting to happen. You've got ulcers that are burning holes through your stomach. You've got all these other things going on because you didn't take those 15 minutes for yourself. Yeah. Every day. So self-care is super duper important. It doesn't have to be big. This is my this I think is going to be my big point today. Yeah. I'm not I'm not talking about you need a. You know, a two-week vacation to Cabo every month. You know, these are really small, simple things that we can do for ourselves that modern geek culture has made a lot easier. Yeah, when people think about self-care, they often think of taking a bubble bath or going to a spa and doing all these. And it, it, it actually sounds like a lot of work. Um, it doesn't have to be. I, I, will, I will say, though, the bubble bath thing. Yeah, well, who, who baths like, are great. Who doesn't like a good bath? Okay, we are very spoiled. We have a great bathtub. Yeah, we, we, we did pretty much buy this house for the giant soaking tub. The, the tub was definitely one of the big selling features. Who cares that I scratch my knuckles on the popcorn ceiling in the living room when I take off a sweater if I can soak in that tub? But Who cares if my house is the size of a postage stamp? <laughs> Most of that postage stamp is the bathtub. Exactly. But yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of, um, money. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you do have to prioritize yourself. And sometimes you can't even focus on what is your stressor? What is the thing to cut out? Because you're just all wrapped up in too much noise. So let's first start about talking about tuning out. Uh, I want to start with one more thing first. Yeah. One of the things that I'm not going to talk about today mm. is, um, alcohol, weed, yeah. or anything else like that. While having a drink and relaxing with friends or going outside and smoking a fat one can be very helpful for stress, it also comes with enough other problems and caveats that um, I think we can skip them for today. Yeah. And I think that they come with enough problems of their own yep. that they shouldn't be your solution. No. Uh, that y you... Maybe as as part of a, a complete balanced breakfast, as they used to say in the commercials, yeah. maybe, but um, I would not resort. I, I do not think, and I'll speak from experience, that diving into the bottom of a bottle to find solutions, you're not going to find mm -hmm. them there. Uh, my, my whole thing is often uh, I, I like those kinds of activities as celebratory, um, not as uh, self-medication. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be focusing on on treating yourself nicely. So shall we start with tuning out? Tuning out. Yes. Go ahead. What do you mean? Uh, so sometimes you just need to turn off the noise of life. Sometimes you need either to focus or maybe you just need quiet. And a lot of times you'll hear people talk about 
meditation, self-reflection. Well, for an ADHD mind, sometimes that can be really difficult. You know, they say, oh, just focus on meditation and think of nothing. What? That is impossible. What do you mean? Mm. Think of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, practice has taken um, all kinds of different names over time. Some people call it meditation. Some people call it self-reflection. Some people call it prayer. They're all kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they all are the same thing. It's I am going to tune out the outside world, focus on the inside world for a little bit and just sort of chill. Yeah. So. Uh, there's many different ways to do this, but like you said, my mind races. I tend to have um, problems with my ears. I have tinnitus, uh, and if it's absolutely deathly quiet, then you get to hear the sound that only I can hear. Yeah, 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 yeah and you get to put up with that for a while. So I don't like that. So one of the things that I need constantly is music. But if the music has lyrics in it, I'll concentrate on the lyrics. So I need just gentle music playing in the backgrounds at almost all times to just fill that noise in the back of my head and to help me either focus on the task that I want to do or focus on nothing and just sort of close my eyes and chill out. So things like the lo-fi mixes, Mm -hmm. you can find, you know, go on YouTube and you find, you know, lo-fi music for doing your homework too, or lo-fi music and watch raccoons drink coffee in a coffee shop. I don't know. Lo-fi for ghosts only. Yes, yes, only yes, ghosts only. You know, there's so many of them now, but the... Uh, lo-fi girl mm-hmm. being, you know, the the little animation of the girl studying in her room uh, with, with just, her kitty, with her cat on the windowsill. But uh, it's been a few years now. But in the background of the village that she's in, in the animations, there was one window across the way from her that all of a sudden the light turned blue. Mm-hmm. And it was blue for a couple of days, and everyone was wondering what was going on with that blue light. And then they launched another channel, which is called Lo-Fi Boy, and it's mostly uh, like synthwave. Yeah. Uh, but it's this this boy has this apartment across town from her, and you can see each other's windows. Yep. Through in the background, but that, that was fun. But I like I like the the, the synthwave boy. Yep. It's it's pretty good stuff, but it's just music that I have on in the background. While I concentrate on other things, but it allows me to concentrate on other things. It allows me to fill the void and it allows me to, especially if I'm alone or if you're not around, you're upstairs, you're doing, you're you're doing work or whatever. It allows me to, uh, fill that space in the back of my head with something so I can concentrate on tasks ahead and I'm not spinning out or I'm not bugging you or I'm not calling somebody. It allows me to just sort of exist for a few minutes. And get more work done. Yeah. And you've been doing this for a while, Long even time. before these lo fi mixes have been coming out and streams have been coming out. You got a little story for us. Uh, yeah. Um, I, uh, can I drop a plug? Sure. Basedrive.com. There you go. Absolutely. My friend Lewis, the Overfiend. My friend. Anyway, love Lewis. Love what he does. Love the channel. Uh, Bass Drive is a drum and bass radio station and they play everything from the hardest of the hard noisia style drum and bass all the way to this really relaxing stuff called uh, chill drum and bass or liquid drum and bass, which is mostly jazz with like double speed drums in the background. And it's the same type of stuff as the lo-fi thing. It just allows me to concentrate without working on lyrics. But years ago, I was working in an office and... um I had a little office in the back of a workshop and I had my phone on the desk and I would always have one of these drum and bass mixes going on my phone while I'm working on my emails so I don't have to listen to the sound of the shop and, you know, the heavy machinery. I can just sort of listen to some music and chill while I work. Um, We had this young kid in the shop, this redneck, uh, that had spent his entire life living in the backwoods. Uh, He was a good kid, very strong, very smart, very fit, very good technician, not worldly. And uh, he walked by my office and he went to one of the middle managers and he goes, I think there's something wrong with the boss. I mean, he's he's in his office just listening to this one repetitive clicking noise. I think he's got PTSD or something because all I hear is this repetitive clicking noise coming out of his phone in his office. So the middle manager just kind of peeks his head in my office and looks at the kid. He's like, what are you talking about, man? He's listening to his music. That's music? To him, music was a, a fiddle and a piano in your living room on a, like a Saturday night kitchen party. He had never heard of electronic music, didn't know that you could make music with computers, didn't know that there were other types 
of music out there besides what he had heard on the radio stations before. So he had this complete awakening moment. But yeah, the boss, uh, the the middle manager's like, what? He's just listening to his music. He's fine. He's just he does that all day. He's good. He's good. He does that all day. Exactly. And, and you're, you're, you're known as the guy that does that all day. And honestly, for me, for the longest time, it's how I got into podcasting. Um, I always needed something in the background too. Sometimes, uh, if I'm doing something that I'm not writing, I'm not creating, but I'm doing a lot of clicking, basically, um, data entry or even just designing things like that. I needed uh more than just music. I needed talking. And so I always, when I was growing up, I used to fall asleep to shortwave radio and I'd find all these great um like um uh, old time radio broadcasts and talk radio and different stories. And then um with the dawn of the internet, uh, I found a lot of those on, you know, internet radio stations, and I was listening to old time radio. This is when you were listening to the shadow. Yes. And stuff like that before. <laughs> oh, I've, I've listened to so many different things, but yeah, X minus one, you name it. Wow. Uh, X minus one. Yeah. I yeah. haven't heard that in so long. I loved X minus one. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, so I was working in an office where they cut streams because the bandwidth was too high and, uh, it was, 2004 and there was this thing called podcasting where it was on demand and you it wasn't a stream you could just download these things and that's what got me into podcasting so for the longest time uh, I needed people in my ears I needed people talking to me now I do a lot of writing and conversing and so during the day I am not um listening to podcasts but I am now listening to music as well but you know if I'm cleaning and I'm doing a task. I'm shopping. Uh, I I need to have people in my ears. I need to hear talking right. to keep me focused. But it's it's the same thing. It's the way that I can tune out. And for me, the podcasts that I've always gravitated towards are ones that are either uplifting or just feed my nerdy knowledge addiction. You know, like oh, I never knew that before. Oh. I didn't know that, you know, Bram Stoker and Walt Whitman were good friends, you know, things like that. Like, and, and then I give you a snowy egret digest of what I learned today. Did you know that his real name was Abraham? Yeah, exactly. He's, he's, it's exact. Um, this is, this that is a direct conversation that we've had. But so for me, that was always my way of just kind of tuning out. Um, if I'm really stressed at work, um, which, is much better than it used to be. But if I'm really stressed at work and I was overloaded, just sitting down and watching stupid TV is was helpful because I needed to zone out, you know, and I needed that that break. Um, and and again, it's you know, a lot of times people are like, "Oh, this is such a great show," and I'm like, "Yeah, but it's just a lot of dark and grim, and I want something." fun and safe and nurturing can i watch bob's burgers again you know can i can i watch a show that i've seen a million times just because i like it yeah if you know I, I do that too i just if um if it's something new that i haven't seen before i'm going to concentrate on it yep. and that's like the only thing i'm going to be doing is watching this new show because i want to know things but if i'm cooking yeah. or i want to be able to enjoy a tv show and if I miss two or three minutes because I'm worrying about caramelizing my onions, I don't want to have to rewind the show and like, well, what did he say? And what's going on with this? And did the butler do it this time? You know, I, I don't want to worry about that. I'm just going to, you know, put on the first 10 seasons of The Simpsons or watch all of Futurama again or Archer or something and just or, you know, uh, uh, Star Trek Next Generation and watch a couple old episodes uh, while, I'm, yeah. while I'm making something because I've got them all pretty much memorized. Yeah. And I can enjoy it. I can enjoy a romp through an old universe, but I don't need to be 100% invested in it because I'm doing something else. Exactly. Exactly. But I, I, having that ability to do that other thing. Yeah. And to do so without a lot of distractions by filling the void in the back of my brain. You know, I can do this now because I have streaming services. Because I can watch my favorite TV shows anytime I want. Yeah. I remember when I was in university and... Okay, so... This is not a, a a secret because every artist did it, but the big dirty, you know, you you put things off. Uh, 
every class I was in required a sketchbook. You needed a daily sketchbook of every art class. So if you were in multiple art classes, you needed different sketchbooks and you couldn't just use the same one because the teachers talked or they were the same teacher. So you'd get towards the end of the semester and your sketchbook is a little empty. So I would, back in the day of three channels, uh, WPIX would just have overnight, it was all Star Trek. And there I am watching Star Trek sketching over and over and over again, filling up those sketchbooks just to get enough so that I can turn it in and don't lose points that that semester. Um, Man, how nice it would have been to have uh, you know, just having uh, the the streaming and having everything on demand. And now I do. Yay. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know. It, it, it's made life better. Yeah. Um, <coughs> There's something you and I do, and I think that this is a joint self-care. Um, it is a really nice thing that we do where we'll come home and we'll throw on YouTube and we'll go back and forth between different music videos or songs or whatever and a lot of times we hit the same songs over and over again, but it's, you know, uh, there's even a game that we play where it's, okay, I'm going to pick a song, you pick the next song, and it has to be related, but it can't be the same band, and it right. can't be the same song. And, and you know, and, you just... And, and, how, and how tenuous you choose that relation to be yeah. is entirely up to you, but, oh, yeah, well... You know, this artist in this song reminds me of this other song, which yeah. is really cool. Or, hey, uh, I saw them in concert. They were with this other band. Or, hey, do you know this other song from the same album, you know? And then yeah. we'll just go through and we always end up at something weird. Yep. And there's a bunch of bands and 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 songs that we've found that we never would have found uh, otherwise. You know, and I, I do love that rabbit hole that you get into. And we're not doing anything. We're just sitting together, listening to music, and it's a great way to tune out. So that's 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 my big thing, you know. What are some other ways that you can think of? Okay, so we've done the tuning out. What are some ways that are more rejuvenating that uh, kind of get you going? Well, um, I guess the big one I want to talk about is exercise. Yeah, and uh, you know, taking care of myself with uh, you know, I go out for a bike ride. Mm -hmm. So I've got my bicycle and I can go out and I can go for a ride. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, but, you know, we live in Canada. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, winter 11 months of the year. Uh, I don't have the, those crazy bikes with the big moon tires and I don't really want to go out in the snow. Uh, you know, I, I go hiking uh, in the winter. I don't, I, I don't ski and I don't uh, own a snowmobile or anything like that. And I don't want to go biking in the snow. That's not the type of riding that I do. Um, but if I wanted to get a good ride... In the winter, you can get these things called trainers, which you take the back wheel off your bike, you connect it to this trainer, and either through air resistance or hydraulic resistance, it feels like you're on the road. Mm -hmm. And the new ones are actually really, really smart that you can hook them up to an app on your phone and TV, and you're watching a video of like a ride going through the mountains, and then as you go uphill it increases the resistance in the trainer to make it harder. Then as you go downhill, it becomes easier. So you don't need to go outside for a good hard bike ride. And you don't need a special, um, you don't need like a, like a special stationary bike. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do it with your regular bicycle. You just need to buy the trainer. Yeah. And then you hook it up to an app. And there's a bunch of them out there. But the one that comes to mind is called Zwift. Mm -hmm. That um, you can go on rides with friends. And you can get connected to virtual leaderboards if you want to go into like a race or, you know, you can hook up and, you know, oh, what are the best uh, roads in the world? And then go racing. You know, I think one of my favorite things is that you can go and race or you can try some of the stages of like the Tour de France or the Giro. Oh, cool. Like, I'm never going to climb these mountains. I'm never going to go to France and race in the Tour de France. I'm not, I'm, I'm not that type of, but I can try it Yeah. in my living room. I don't yeah. need to go anywhere. And it could be the most, you know, we could be in the armpit of hell in the absolute worst weather in the world. And here I am in my living room pretending that I'm in France climbing mountains in the Alps on my bicycle. 
You know, how great is that? Yeah. The, the technology, and I can get a workout as hard or as gentle as I want. I can get all the physical fitness that I should be doing, and I don't even have to leave my living room. Which is lovely. And yeah. you don't have to put on snow pants. Which, no. Because a lot of times you and I, we, we go for a walk around the neighborhood. It's like, all right, I am stir crazy. Let's go for a walk. And it's, all right, get the snow pants on. <laughs> get the, when it's, when it is snowing and, and it's yuck out there, get the, the boots on and the whole thing. And sometimes it can be very easy to go, ah, oh, that's a lot. But if you can overcome that, that's awesome. So yeah. So this is your way of saying you want, you want a trainer. I don't think so because I don't think we have room for it. Yeah, that's, we, we, we I'm wondering. Need, I'm like, where can we put this? <laughs> we would need to completely remodel the living room. Yeah, which we were thinking about doing anyways. To put in a little desk for myself when I have to start working from home next year. Yep. Um, but yeah, maybe a trainer. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But they're super fun. The technology's out there. But that's just the type of geeky thing that exists now. That um, you know, you can connect yourself to um uh, to a community that's out there without needing to leave your living room and there's a lot of this connectivity stuff that we're going to talk about as we move on with this but um you know you can connect to the world out there you don't need to leave your living room and you can still meet all your fitness goals you can still do all that stuff um and it doesn't need to cost a lot yeah and it doesn't need to be incredibly complicated it's an app on your phone yeah exactly you know and you know, uh, there's there's a bunch of like podcasts out there um, that people have done with like binaural recording. I think that's the word where you're it creates this sound where you're picking up the mics are in different parts of your mm -hmm. body, so it picks up that whole surround sound. And you know, it's like you're walking through the woods or you're walking through a city. Or one of my one of my coworkers at work was showing me this really silly app that him and his family got in. Where you're trying to outrun a zombie horde? Yes, there, that one's been around for a while. So That's it's great. Like, it's like yeah. a step tracker. Yeah. So as you go for a walk during the day, and you can do it as a group. Yeah. So it's him, his wife, and um, the some other members of their family that are all in like this group, and that as they all go for their walks during the day, it adds their steps to their combined total, helping them play this silly little video game where they're outrunning zombies. Yeah. Which is just awesome. Yeah. And the fact that you do it as a team, you know? Yeah. And I mean, we, we all, I'm sure, remember the Pokemon Go craze. Um, Pokemon that, Go was amazing. For it me. is. It is. And there's still people, like, I know that we have listeners that are still all into Pokemon Go. And Hi, that's Jason. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> uh, but more than, uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I'm terrible at this. But yeah, go outside and take a walk. We have uh, some good friends that uh, got married a couple of years ago. They met on Ingress. They were, they were, which is the precursor to Pokemon Go and much more like sci-fi. It was very sci-fi, but it was the yeah. same technology. Yeah, basically. it's the same technology. And, um, you know, getting out and going for walks. Like these are all really good ways of taking care of yourself and giving yourself that energy. I have always said that, you know, a lot of times you'll hear people say, Oh, you're depressed. Try exercise. <laughs> Shut up. Um, it's just, it, that's my knee jerk reaction is just it, shut up. Uh, but well, exercise is good for you. It just, it just ends up being so condescending. Like you don't know what me, you don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, but, but for it, me, it's, I don't like to call it exercise. I like to say activity because it should be something you enjoy going to a gym and working out. Some people absolutely love that. And that gives them that get up and go. And that's what they need. For me, it just felt like punishment. But going for a walk, going for a bike ride, going to Aikido, I just, that is the best, by the way. Being able to beat people up and get beat up. Oh, does that ever feel good? It's, it's you know, the thing is, as soon as you say, we need to do some exercise, all I see is like Olivia Newton-John in the get, let, let's get physical video. <laughs> and it's like, oh man, but I don't have any leg warmers that match my leotard. And <laughs> I have to put my hair up in a thing. And it's like so complicated, right? So complicated. <laughs> so, like, uh, okay, yeah, there are those classic, you know, go to the gym and lift all the weights and turn your life into a ballet commercial, ballet's commercials. Like, yeah. Fine. That's one thing, but go for a walk around your neighborhood. Yeah. How about that new little, that, 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 that little park just down the road? Take your dog to the park. Yeah. That's exercise. Uh, walk around your neighborhood and find all the historical sites. 
Because there's little placards in front of places. One thing that I like, uh, our town did it this summer. Um, they had this art show where it's kind of like the cows thing where everybody designs a cow. Well, everybody had a mannequin to start off with. And these artists created their installations around these mannequins and walking around and finding them. You know, we didn't even, we didn't take the map. It was more as we walked around our neighborhood, we looked for more and more and it was like, oh, I think I see a mannequin. Let's go down this road. And, you know, visiting the different mannequins and seeing them. Um, little things like that can be a, a really fun way to explore and get in that activity and have some fun and, and step away from the world. You know, you're going for a walk. Your your phone is either in your pocket or you left it at home or whatever. You're not connected and you're just out there, whatever. Especially when it comes to exercise and especially, you know, while we're on self-care and exercise, yeah. it is very, very easy to say no to yourself mm -hmm. and to come up with excuses. Oh, I can't work out today. My back hurts. Or, oh, I don't have time. I, I, I can't go for a walk today. I'm wheelchair bound. Yeah. Or, my, you know, I'm missing a foot. Or... <laughs> You know, all of these are the, you know, I can't go outside. I'm visually impaired. Yeah. Well, there's. We're not saying this, that these are excuses. Yeah. We're yeah. not saying that that's true for anyone. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. These are just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there may need to be some accommodation that needs to be made for a bad back or a bad leg or, uh, you know, you can't see too good in the bright yeah. sun. Okay. Fine. Make those accommodations. Yeah. Go out and try it. Um, You can't. Uh, ride a bicycle because you find it too difficult or it's yeah. impossible for you, get a hand bike. Yeah. Put it on your table in front of you and pedal a thing with your hands. Um, we had a, we had a good friend that, uh, we knew from Balticon that, uh, did a lot of seated exercises because, uh, she was, and she's the one I got my, my TARDIS corset from, uh, because she, she was mostly wheelchair bound and, but she wanted fun and, you know, that, that, kind of zombie thing uh totally works there's also the lord of the rings uh one where you track how much you walk and if it's a pedal but you know a hand crank bite uh, with your hands or whatever you're, and you're trying to get to the fires of mount Doom. yeah you're 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 on your way towards mordor yeah oh, absolutely cool. yeah fun. um I, I i like that type of thing uh when i was overseas uh there was a group of people that what they were doing was trying to get home Mm. So every day you would go for a run or a rollerblade or a bike and you would tally your mileage. And the idea was in the six months that we were gone, you would try to make the distance to come back home. Oh, that's so sweet. Yep. I love that. Uh, I've also heard of people like virtually, um, you know, virtual races and virtual uh, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to walk to Paris. I'm going to walk London to Paris today, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, you know, whatever it is. And you're, you're building up those different things. And then, you know, you get snapshots from the internet and, you know, make yourself a little digital scrapbook of these are all the places I've walked. And the, yeah, the other thing I kind of want to do that. Like I want to go from Quonos to, ah. you know, like the capital city to like some underground temple or whatever, you know, straight to Grethor. Thanks. That's how my exercise normally feels. <laughs> That's why we call it activity, not exercise. <laughs> okay. So, and you know, and another thing, it's if we're if you're new starting a new activity, uh, it can be pretty intimidating. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many times you know when we were, when I was in that fencing club that we would have people that would walk by us as we're fencing, you know, fighting with yeah. swords, and they would watch us do it, and they go. Oh, that looks like a lot of fun. I'm like, well, do you want to grab a mask and a doublet, and I'll, I'll I'll show you, you know, I'll show you what to do. Why don't you try? Well, you'll just beat me. Like I'm just gonna lose. I don't know what I'm doing. It does look fun though. It's like so try. Oh, I can't. You'll just you'll just be you'll just kick my butt. It's, like, it's the same thing we get from my keto. People are like, oh, I can't. I I have a bad back. I have a this. I have a that. And it's like. We're not here to hurt you. I do this with little kids, yeah. you know? Is, is, is that what you think I do is I just sit here on the boardwalk, wait for people to go by, say they want to try fencing, and then I just I just hit them with a sword? Is, it, is, it, is that how you think this works? It's, no, I'm here to teach you how much fun this is to yeah. get involved in the hobby with me. To be fair, there are like some groups and communities that do things like that, but find the ones that are staffed by geeks you know like find the geeks and they're gonna say think about it this way when you have a hobby and somebody shows interest how exciting is it for you to show them what you love 
It's the same thing. And now with things like Discord, yeah, that has become so much easier to find a community of like-minded people yeah. to um, show them the new soup that you made today. Yeah. Or... Um, you've been altering your clothes to make it fit you better or to, you know, try this new cosplay or uh, there's a game that you like and no one in your area plays, so you go on Discord to find other players. Um, Discord has helped uh, create these little micro-communities. Um, y- you know, there's a video game that I like and there's uh, mods that people have made. And the mod communities are so accepting and so caring and so fun, full of just nerds. Yeah. That 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 want to make the game better by putting in their own their own little modification into it. And then you all sit around and you have these discussions of guys, I'm lost. Where do I go on level six? Where's the blue key? Oh, the blue key's over here. Why do you need the blue key though? Ugh, have you tried doing this with the green key? And then you know, oh, I didn't even think of that. Wow, that's a, that's a great idea. And you go back through the archives of months and months and months of chat to find all of these little things that you didn't know about your favorite game. Um, and, and that kind of leads me to another point of like, and we're veering out of the activity thing here, but finding your communities, um, a lot of times, okay, you're new in a city, you don't know a lot of people, it can feel very lonely. Um even for introverts, you can loneliness is a thing. Finding those communities. If there's something you're passionate about, there is somebody else out there that is passionate about it. Um, finding those discords, finding those subreddits, finding those Facebook groups, or you know what? Go on to Twitch and look for what it is you're interested in. Is every community going to be great and nurturing? No, but you will find the ones that are and you'll stick with them. Um, I randomly found a, 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 a Twitch streamer. She does, I found her cause she did water marbling nail art and it was amazing. And next thing you know, I'm learning about Hollow Knight cause she also plays Hollow Knight on Twitch and she's just such a sweetheart. Uh, my simple little pleasures, by the way, uh, M S L P on Twitch. She's amazing. Um, she's great. yeah. And, and, you know, yeah, you know, she's got her little cat there and, and there's a really nice community and there's a whole bunch of people that I met through Twitch because during COVID I was feeling very lonely. Luckily I had tech, but I couldn't see anyone. I couldn't go anywhere. And you know, if you're moving to a new town, that's kind of what it's like. Uh, when I moved to Nova Scotia, I didn't know anybody and tech goes overseas. Well, I did NaNoWriMo and I found a live writing group and built a, a friend group out of that you still talk to people from that group. i still talk to people from that group i love that group that was 13, amazing 13 oh well, no so we're 15 years later one of them is a patron yeah hello patron <laughs> and we love her uh but it's that's the thing it's it's you find these little communities find something that you love um honestly my friend group here in ottawa is built around my aikido group because that's what I spend my time doing. I, I will. I will say this: um, that in any group that you join, like there's one of these these the two common fears that I see that I have myself. It's like if I'm going to join a new group, there's always going to be at least one person that's better at, better than me at it. Yep. And they're going to suck all the fun out of the activity because they're better. Mm. And there's always that one other person that has more money than you. Yes. And buys all the toys, all the baubles, all the trinkets, and has all the things that you don't. And I don't want to put up with. And my one big piece of advice for that is join a group or a club or an activity that's non-competitive. Yes. Take the competition out of it. So, you know, I like martial arts. I do like jujitsu. I think it is an amazing martial art. But the fact that it's all based on sparring and Mm -hmm. rolling with someone and the fact that I have a very bad ankle, bad knees, a very bad neck, my, you know, I've severed the ligaments in the fingers in both my hands and I have to go to work tomorrow. And your foot. Yeah. And I have no ligaments left in the outside of my right foot. I really don't feel like my, the best use of my hobby time is going to get beat up by guys half my age. Why? I, I don't. That, that's not how I'm going to enjoy myself. So, as much as I enjoy the hobby, 
That's and when you do. say beat up, you mean seriously beat up as opposed to what we actually do, which is pretend beat up. Right. But, yeah. but that's why that's one of the big things I like about yeah. Aikido. It's non-competitive. We don't go to tournaments. Yep. Nobody's going to win a trophy. So the people that we tend to attract are people who are into martial arts for other reasons yep. other than uh, the dopamine hit of winning at something. Yep. So that we don't have any of those competitive type jocks. Yep. In in our in our friend group, in our martial arts group. It, it's a it's a very loving, caring, accepting type of group. You know, I uh you know, like uh, you've got all kinds of uh, food groups yeah. that you're in. Yeah. It's not a cooking competition. You nope. don't have a judge going around seeing how delicious your soup actually is, but just everybody posts pictures of the food they're making that day. Yeah. So- I'm in a group called Soup Beast and it is fantastic. <laughs> You want to get nerdy? It's nerdy. I, I would I, I would really enjoy a, a you to do a painting of Rory as the soup beast. <laughs> as the soup beast. Well, I did uh, do a painting of Rory with um, Chanko. Yes, eating Chanko. So, but I yes. got this idea of like a big black cauldron. Yeah, and yeah, just like Rory's eyes and his spiny sticking out of the top of the Ooh, cauldron, like like an ambush predator. Yes. Gotcha. Well, he's got the eyes on the top of his head. Yeah, he already is an ambush predator. He's a dragon. Um, But uh, yeah, finding that that group and, you know, you're talking about it and I'm thinking about there's a whole other group that I bet a lot of listeners are already involved in. LARPing. LARPing is not competitive. It's storytelling and you dress up in costumes sometimes. Live action role playing. Yes. And and six people that don't know. Depending on how deep you're into LARPing. Uh, you may be hitting each other with foam swords, you know, you may be hitting each other with foam uh, uh, weapons and having a great old time. We have a friend and he, his LARPing weekends are camping weekends. Mm-hmm. They all go out and camp and hit each other with foam stuff and have a grand old time mm-hmm. um, there. And there's many different ways. Like uh, I, I remember um, when I was younger meeting LARPers and going, yeah, this is not my bag. But then meeting other LARPers later on in life and realizing, oh, this is a completely different bag. So there's lots of different styles based on how deep you get into it, how much of the rules are a part of it, and, you know, how how your friend group is built around it. But yeah, like it's a non-competitive thing. You get to do the role playing aspect. You get to do the storytelling. You might even get the activity, which... Uh, you know, if you're hitting people with foam swords, you're doing that activity. Um, SCA is a huge thing. And there's many aspects. So Society of Creative Anachronism, um, huge aspects like, oh, you want to get into the SCA because you like hitting each other with medieval uh, weapons. Awesome. You get into it because you like building armor. Awesome. You get into it because you like sewing clothes and old garb. Awesome. You like it because you want to cook the old recipes. Cool. You like it because you like to camp and hang out with people. Sweet. Um, you know, whatever it is that you want, you can get from it. And that's the that's the beauty of, you know, I'm trying to li- always link it back to technology. Right? Yeah. That's the beauty of things like Discord. Yes. And the beauty of forums and the internet. Meetup we uh, websites and that, yeah. That you can find these groups now yeah. and they don't have to be in your area anymore. So no. if you live slightly remote or you just don't like leaving the house, you, you can find a group of people who like the same band that you do or yep. that like cooking the same food that you do or they like writing the same type of stories or, you know, collaborative writing groups or role playing groups or whatever. Anyway, they're all out there. And all my best friends I met on the Internet. <laughs> We had, including you, there were, including me, yeah. there were more people, there were more people at our wedding that I knew that I met digitally than there were members of my flesh, flesh and blood family. Yeah. Um, and that was cool. And that was cool. That was great to see them there and to give us that support and love. Uh, and I, I appreciate them all for coming. Um, I apologize for the, the void, but. The technology is there now. We can use it to fill these voids that we have and we can build these communities and we can help take care of ourselves by uh, we can help take care of ourselves by filling the, the, the voids that are there and building a better community around us. They don't all have to be people that we know or grew up with or people that we go to school or work with. That can be one separate part of your life. And then when you go home, you can unplug and pull yourself into a community that you picked and you chose. Yeah. 
you don't ever have to meet them in person. You don't ever have to go anywhere. Yep. Um, and sometimes, you know, there's the parasocial relationships they call they they reference, where you know you're listening to this, and maybe you don't know Tech and I, but we're your friends because we're you're listening to us and we're in your ears, and that's 100 percent self care because we do we care about you and we are happy that you are with us. Um, Man, I was never so hurt as when one of my favorite YouTubers that I watch his videos every morning as I'm brushing my teeth, mm-hmm. getting ready for work. When he was diagnosed with cancer and was going to need to take a break from his weekly, from his daily show so that he could go get cancer treatments and he could need, get the operations that he needed. And he happens to be 100% cancer free now. We are so thankful. And we are so thankful for that. But I don't know this guy. Yeah. I've never met this guy. And I've consumed his content for nigh on 10 years now. Um, I, I know a lot about him. He doesn't know me at all. Right. Like it is a complete parasocial relationship. But it really hurt me yeah. when this guy that I consider a friend And it's a beneficial relationship too for you. Mm. You are getting a lot from this. Yeah. So you it, consider him a friend even if he doesn't know you. <coughs> I keep going back to that same quote from Futurama. From Futurama where Fry talks about why he likes Star Trek when he says sometimes when I didn't have any friends, I would watch your show and it felt like I did. Yep. That is entirely true about Star Trek and about a hundred other things and about the relationships that we make with podcasters and YouTubers and VTubers yeah. and Twitch streamers and all the rest of them. We just have to be careful to avoid falling into that trap of thinking that more of a relationship exists Yeah, yeah. than, than, than doesn't. And the, uh, this does happen to a lot of people. It is a tragic fact of the medium that they're creating content and you're consuming it. It doesn't mean they know you. Yeah. And let's be fair. They don't owe you anything. No. They put the content out that they want to put out. You consume it. Yeah. Um, I will say that all of our fans, all of our listeners, and all of our patrons have been the most adoring, loving, caring, and respectful fans yeah. that one could ever wish for. And I love all of you and thank you so much. I have always for- said that the mixed nut cases are like the best that I've ever heard of because one, we haven't had any creeps. Knock on wood. Where's wood? Here we go. Knock on wood. Haven't had any creeps. Um, and two, we get a lot of response. Um, you know, they say that uh, one to 10% of your listeners will reply give you feedback and i don't know if that's an outdated number or not but we hear and when i say we hear it's on social media it's in discord it's over email you know we do hear from our listeners and it it, it, or we hear stuff we've done mentioned elsewhere and it's definitely a higher percentage it's definitely a higher percentage than our actual listeners so then um you know 1 to 10 i think i think probably 20 to 30% of our listeners and that's a careful you know that is a a conservative estimate um we hear from because they're awesome and we love it and we love having you and you know there was there i love talking about this there was that one guy that would come to our panels in Balticon i had no idea who he was and we would do giveaways and stuff and he would always give them back and say, no, 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 give it to somebody else. I just really like your show. And I have no idea who it was. Never anything. But hey, it dude. Was, yeah, he he was awesome. And I hope he's still listening. But, you know, we, we call it a parasocial relationship. It does not mean it's a bad thing. It is actually a very nice thing. Um, but having that sometimes can be really helpful. And you know what? If. You can you can also use this to make yourself feel better. So again, coming back to self-care, we talked about how activity is really good for you. You know what else is really good for you? Nourishing yourself, taking care of yourself. So if, you know, you feel like I don't know how to do these things, there are skills I don't have. You can use YouTube or social media. You know, um, I, I love seeing this. Um, I don't know how to fix this thing and I've got something broken and I don't know what to do. You know, the, 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 I have something, I saw this today. I have something stuck in the drain of my sink. What am I going to do? I can't afford a plumber. 
So reach out to the trans handy ma'am and um, she'll show you how to get it unstuck. It's a really fun uh, little video on Instagram right now. Um, you know, she's great. She is. She's fantastic. And she likes my art. Um, she 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 did a, a thing at um, I was in a, a Zoom thing with her. And uh, w- while we were waiting for things to get started, she was just like, I love your art. The 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 dragon in the background. I'm like, that's Rory. And uh, it was great. Anyway, um, but yeah, so like the trans handyman or other people out there teaching you how to fix things around your house um, or how to fix your car or whatever. Um, or, you know, I don't know how to cook. I do, but I'm being theoretical here. I don't know how to cook. So watch YouTube. Start with somebody really accessible, really easy. And like Babish. Babish. Babish basics with Babish. Basics Absolutely. With Babish, yeah, good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, jo- Joshua Wiseman. Really easy. And even Uncle Roger. I mean, fried rice. It's not that hard. But, you know, through his comedy, honestly, my fried rice has gotten a lot better. Oh, yeah. I think. Um, I've always been all right with fried rice, but I definitely think I've gotten much better. Um, yeah, make something you've never done before. Uh, when we get into December and I do the 12 days of podcasting, I've been doing recipes and honestly, that has been self care for me. The last couple of years, I've been focusing on doing, uh, Tex Mom's recipes and recipes from his family because, you know, uh, if you've been listening, you know that. It's been hard and, uh, and we, we lost her this year. Um, and I'm going to continue. And that just made me feel closer to her when I couldn't. And I also do recipes from all of you. So, uh, please send me recipes from your families. I, I definitely felt a lot closer to all of the people that have sent recipes to me. Um, and I did made things that I never thought I would make. I made potato candy and, I still think that was a wild experience, and that was awesome. Well, we had recipes from around the world on these yeah. things, and they were all so much fun to make. Yeah, it was great. Um, so, you know, try something different. Uh, do a little tutorial. Oh, I've always wanted to draw, but I don't know how to draw. Well, watch a little tutorial. Uh, have some fun. There's nothing wrong if it turns out bad. Like, what's the worst that happens? It doesn't taste good. You burnt it. Okay. I guess you're having popcorn. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's fine. And guess what? You learned what not to do next time. Uh, I, I, I added too much dill to the soup this week. And yeah, I'm going to not use as much la- next time. Oh, and I'm going to put everything in a bag because pulling out the dill afterwards was really difficult. Um, you, basically like a little tea bag, you put it in the soup and yep, you can yep. pull everything out. Um, all of these things. And while you're doing this, while you're feeding your geek brain, you're nourishing yourself. You're rewarding yourself. You're not just buying something that's packaged. And the more you do, the more it can become something that is self-care. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the process years ago that I did building the suit for the Clockwork Doctor. Mm. I think building it was as much fun as any other aspect of walking around the con. And I've always and every year you did more. I've always been really interested in doing some heavy armor uh, cosplays, and recently I found <laughs> on Etsy, on excuse me on Etsy, um, there's a guy that has uh, made all of the blueprints available for making an EVA foam space marine, which is going to be my my project for the next little while of me sitting in my living room cutting up pieces of foam and gluing them together. And trying to make myself look like an eight foot tall space marine. I think it'll be great. It'll be fun. Yeah, I think so. And the guy's got tutorial videos showing you how he put the whole thing together. And um, it's something to keep me busy, something to keep my hands busy during the winter. And um, it, if it doesn't work, I guess I buy another piece of foam and I start over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, you know, at first I'm going to try to make some pieces out of cardboard. And just to see if the patterns work and what kind of little issues I encounter. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> I uh, I can't wait to get started. I think, it, I think it'll be fun. And it'll uh, scratch that itch that I've had since I built the Clockwork Doctor suit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm actually really interested in seeing what you do with the cardboard first. Because I think that can be a lot of fun. We know somebody that made a whole cardboard bender. And that was amazing. Um, so, yeah. But how do you bite his shiny metal... But Mm -hmm. if it's not shiny nor metal. It was shiny. It just wasn't metal. Was it tinfoil? 
it was it was um metallic spray paint mm. yeah and that was awesome walking around the farmer's market <laughs> So guys, collecting donations with a a, a giant vendor. <laughs> so guys, it um it really doesn't take a lot, yeah, um to take care of yourself. And we've we've mentioned a couple of things here, but at the end of it, I I think to take care of yourself, um at least the way I look at it is um it's hard to take care of yourself if you're alone, mm-hmm. and it's hard to take care of yourself if you don't have goals. So having people around you to help you reach those goals is better and maybe we aren't blessed uh with a supportive family or with a close-knit group or any of these things but you can find those groups online and you could do worse than the mixed nut cases oh yeah and then from there you can find other communities and you know if you don't know uh, where to look send us a message ask us Hey, I really want to get involved in knitting, or I really want to try. Oh, we got we got, we got a mixed nut case for you on that one. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I really want to try crocheting, but I'm but I don't know where to start. Well, have I got a friend for you? Have I got a hooker for you? <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. Wow, you guys keep mentioning cooking, but I I don't know anything about it. Do you know anyone who could talk to me and help and help me with my cooking? Yes, I I know several. Several, yes. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Just. Whatever it is, uh, let us know. We are we are very happy to support. And here's another just last little tip I want to give um, to make sure that self-care is a priority. Reward yourself for doing it. Come up with a tracking system, some way that you can reward yourself for doing the thing. Um this, this also works for like daily tasks. Okay. Um, oh, I need to clean. Okay. You don't have to clean the whole house. Clean for 10 minutes. And then play a video game for 10 minutes. Um, uh, you know, Dave Slusher was talking about how he is setting an alarm on his watch every day. And that is, okay, you've got to clean. You've got 10 minutes. You have to clean. Just start with one corner. And he's got a prioritized list. And he goes through and he like does it. that area. And then when he's done, he's done. Okay, stop. No more. Do you know what I do at work? Mm-hmm. Uh, in the morning, I go through uh, all my list of tasks and all my notes from the previous day or the last week, mm-hmm. and I make my to-do list of all the things I need to do that day. And the number one thing I put on the list is write the list of things you need to do because when I write my list, I can then strike that item off because I've done it. I built my list. Yep. So I can strike that off my list, and I've done something. Yes. So I get that dopamine hit because yeah. I did. I can strike something off my list. Or there's other times where I'll get a phone call and it's Bob and he wants me to put the new TPS sheets on the cover reports. And I go, cool, thanks, Bob. And I hang up the phone and then I go to my list and I go talk to Bob about cover sheets on TPS reports. And then I write it off the list <laughs> because I did that thing. You did that thing. Exactly. And um, I do I do a digital version. So when I click that I did it, it goes bing. And that bing is so rewarding. <laughs> but yeah, just little things like that. Um, give yourself a a sticker, you know, make a little journal and put a sticker for every day that you did something that was self-care. You know, give yourself that dopamine hit. Uh, a lot of these recommendations, things we're talking about, yeah, they're geeky, but they're also pretty ADHD and neurodivergent um, friendly as well. I think they work for everyone. I don't think you have to be, but boy, does it help. So like going for a walk or going for a bike yeah. ride. You know, one thing that my mom used to do a long, long time is my mom would go for a walk every day. Yeah. To a coffee shop. There you go. To have a coffee with her friends. Yep. And then she would come back. And, you know, instead of just going for a walk around the neighborhood or, you know, going for yeah. a thing on your treadmill, go to a cafe. Have a little have a little coffee. Have I a, think have I a little met, snacky cake. I met one of them uh, at her funeral. The one that lives around the corner. Mm-hmm. She was lovely. Oh, mom's walking friend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was lovely. Yeah, so, I never met her before, but it was it was great. You know, in the cycling world, they talk about respecting the cafe. Stop. The cafe stop, yes. You must respect the cafe stop, which I I, I wholeheartedly agree with. Like, if I'm going to be outside biking on a Saturday and I'm going to go out for a long time, I really want there to be the you know I'm going to go and order the most <laughs> decadent, sprinkle covered, custard filled artery clogging death donut that i can when i hit that cafe (laughs) because i'm out here on my bicycle and my bum hurts and my feet hurts and i've got bugs in my teeth and this sucks but at least i get to eat you know oh what's the new donut called oh the clogger 
Yeah. I, cronut. I, the cronut. You know, yeah. I, I am going to have this and it'll make me feel better. And then I'll come home. You know, so you, like you said, reward yourself. It do doesn't. You, do you actually people. have a cafe stop? Uh, there are spots on my roots. Um, that could be kept, but do you actually stop? I, cause I don't carry a wallet. I don't have a bank card. So I, I can't stop somewhere and buy things, but there is on my short loop, yeah. there's a farm that has Highland cattle. Yeah. So I'll stop against the fence and I'll pull out like a protein bar or my water bottle and I'll just stare at the cows. The big brown shaggy yeah, yeah. Highland cows with the big horns. We, we stopped there when we, when you, you took me. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll stop and watch the cows. And then on, uh, my other, my longer loop on Saturdays, uh, there's just a, it's just a very pretty spot at the top of a large hill. Mm hmm. And I'll stop and get off the bike and there's a nice field to sit down in and I'll have a, I'll have a, you know, I'll have a granola bar or something and I just enjoy the, the sights and sounds of being out in the country. And then I go down the big hill and I finish the second half of my ride. Yeah. No, those are great. Those are your cafe stops and I love it. Um, uh, I, yeah, it just give yourself reward for being good to yourself. Like that should, a lot of people say self care is the reward and yeah, it is, but. Honestly, in order to prioritize it, you need to reward yourself for doing it. You need to congratulate yourself for doing it. You need to respect it enough or it is going to be very easy to say, but I have to do this thing for somebody else. And I think my last thing I, I, I want to hit mm -hmm. is reward yourself for doing the activity. Yeah. And um, by that, I mean, treat yourself. Yeah. So you want to get into podcasting or you've been into podcasting for a little bit. You have yourself a microphone. You need a new microphone. Upgrade. Why don't you get the fancy one? The one that'll make you feel better. Do do you need it? Is it cool? Yeah. Can you afford it? Yeah. Dude, get it. Get get the shiny thing. Get the nice thing. You know, oh, my mouse on my computer just died. I use it every day. Buy the fancy mouse. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Treat yourself. If you can afford it, if it's within your means, you know, I'm not talking about buying, you know, gold plated Rolls Royces here. Just, I need new, I need new boots for cycling. These are the ones that I need. These are the ones that I could get. Can I afford them? Yeah. Will they make a big difference to my biking? No. Will I feel better wearing them? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Get those, you know, treat, uh, treat yourself just a little bit. Tech is not just being vague here. Uh, the microphone, he, he has convinced me to upgrade my microphone every single time. Because he's like, yeah, do it. You use it every day. I use it every day. Um, my mouse is this really super fancy mouse that apparently it's a, it's a, is it a Best Buy exclusive? Um, or I, something. I don't think, well, it, Logitech's the only company that's ever made Yeah, them. but the, the and, one I have, I think, is like the Best Buy exclusive. I'm yeah, not sure. Because it's their office series. Yeah. Because they don't make them in like a gamer version. Yeah. So you're never going to buy these from like Razer or Mad Cat. Yeah, but. Or, it's, you know, there's the regular one that I had, which is nice, and I still use it when I'm traveling. And then there's this Ergo one, which is even nicer and uh, has this spend, magnetic base. And You yeah. spend all day yeah. on your computer with that mouse. It's it, not a mouse. It's a track man, but yeah. But, but yeah. With that pointing device, yeah. it may as well be a good one. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I I got my my cute little keyboard with the clacky keys and it's it's right for my hands and it's right for my wrists and you know these are the things that you want to do uh last year tech uh for christmas got me a um automatic standing desk with that's magnetic so my cable management it still looks like spaghetti but i swear it's much better than it was that was a splurge that was but a splurge but I have settings that say, okay, I'm standing, hit one button. I'm sitting on my yoga but ball, hit another button. I'm sitting on my actual chair, hit the third button. Like that is cool. I will, I will say this. Yeah. The, uh, there's a lot of places that one can scrimp and save. Oh yeah. And there's a lot of ways that, that you can make what would be an unaffordable, uh, hobby affordable and reachable to anyone yeah and you know buying used or finding a marketplace and you know dipping your toe with a rental yep or at like a like a try and buy there's all kinds of ways to make i mean for a long long time you know your number one recommendation for a podcaster who wanted to get a cheap microphone was to go to a pawn shop and buy an old rock star microphone from the yeah. old video game because it works and it's great and it's cheap and there's lots of them yep um 
my head tracker that I use for my flight simulator is based on the old camera from a PS3. Yeah. Paid 10 bucks for it. Still works fine. Don't need another one. Yeah. Um, but the one place I will say where it is not okay mm. to scrimp is your feet. Yes. So I... That I, is also self-care. That is also self-care. But especially if you want to get out there and you want to start walking or hiking or running or anything. You just want to get out of the house and do your groceries. Crocs. You're going to you're gonna piss off a lot of people here. As comfortable as they may be, I don't think are good choices. There's going to be a lot of people angry at you. I have, and I say this because I have scoliosis. I'm crooked. Uh, I have problems with my feet. I have problems with one ankle. I have a lot of problems with my back and my neck. I need specialty footwear to make sure that I can survive doing the activities that I'm doing. So my footwear costs me a little more than the regular person, but that is the price that I pay to make sure that I can keep doing these activities. It is not, I think it would be too easy for me to say, well, I can't go outside unless I wear the special shoes. I guess this means I can't go outside anymore. No, that's not what it means. It means that I have to budget for it. Yeah, and we're talking about like focusing on quality, not just dollar value. Like it doesn't mean that you have to buy Air Jordans. Um, No, no, but it means that you can go to stores like The Running Room and you can get your feet assessed for free and you don't have to buy anything from the store. But learn, do you pronate? Do you supinate? Do you have flat feet? Are both your feet the same? What type of shoe do you need for your feet? And if if you think orthopedics are not worth it, go get yourself assessed, try it out, put those insoles in, start walking around. You're going to stand corrected. You had to throw that in, didn't you? I did. You will stand corrected. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Timba. I'm, I'm, I'm going to plug another company here. <laughs> yeah. There are insoles that you can get brand named Soul, S-O-L-E. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they were on the $30, $40 range is what I was paying. But you take the insoles, you put them in the oven on low for a few minutes, then put them in your shoes, and then put your shoes on. Yeah. And they mold to your feet. Oh, homie. They are the most comfortable things on earth. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Dr. Scholl's, you know, whatever. Uh, it doesn't take much. Just mm-hmm. take care of your feet. But also a lot of other things, you know, take care of your feet. Take care of your teeth. Take care of your teeth, please. Please take care of your teeth. Uh, your teeth are important. And afor- unfortunately, a lot of um, health care is not included. So please take care of your teeth. Um, take care of your skin. Take care of uh, your body. You know, these these are all self-care. Um, and it doesn't cost a lot quality over cost. You know, sometimes it might cost a little bit more because you're buying something that you didn't buy before. Um, but quality over cost, you know, they just find the thing that works. Um, and it's really easy. Uh, not really easy. It's, it might seem daunting right away, but I mean, once you start doing it and you start taking care of yourself, these are the things that can help you. For me, um, my skincare, I go in and it is, it's time for me. I am pampering myself. I am doing something just for me. This does not help tech. This does not help the world. This does not help anyone, but it is time that I spend on myself. I put a little bit of cream on. I give myself a little facial massage and in about five, 10 minutes, I have that world to myself and everything else can just shut up. And I love it. So take find what it is that you need and take care of you. And on that note. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, I will say this as I finish up. Yep. This is my self-care. Podcasting. Podcasting. Yes. Sitting here, having a conversation with you, reaching out to our audience a little bit, uh, and, uh, you know, having this medium here for us to just sort of Express chat. the things that are important to us in chat. Yeah. I mean, ah, this was kind of an introspective one. You know, we'll, we'll, ah, we'll get back to some other stuff later. But uh, this is fun. Yeah. And uh, I think I think a lot of people need it right now. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right, everyone. And now I want to thank the patrons. And just as I go to get my Patreon list, uh, 
there's a new feature. Fans can now gift Patreon memberships. Just in time for the holidays. Yeah. If you've got that person on your list that you don't know what to get them for Christmas. Yeah. Patreon. And I'm not saying for me. I'm just saying, yeah. Yeah. All right. Share your gift page. Do I have to actually turn this on? You know. Oh, I give, see. Give somebody the gift of a podcast. It doesn't have yeah. to be ours, but it should rhyme with Muddy Mites. Muddy Mites? <laughs> that, that would be nice. There is a cute little gift page. Oh, my gosh. So just put gift after any Patreon. So, like, I'm patreon.com slash unique chats. You just put gift right after, and you will get it. You'll get the tears. You will get the... um uh, you know, all the different things. And then you can give that as a gift. And it looks like a little gift card and everything. It is so cute. Give friends and family access to Nutty Nuke Joss on Patreon. Oh, you can get to Patreon.com slash Nuke Joss. Slash gift. Slash gift. You didn't say the slash. There you go. Okay, of course. Sorry. Yeah. Get the little gift box. Choose a membership. Tier to that is so cute. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, there you go. Uh, that's that's pretty neat. I bet there's some that I can think about that I might want to use that. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So, let's thank the patrons. Thank you so much to our patrons. Uh, we have the, the poll is going up and it should probably be already up by the time you hear this over what quarter threes um, proceeds are going towards. So please go and vote if you are one of those patrons. So thank you so much to our big daddies. Uh, thank you to Jax, our top big daddy. Thank you to Jason. Thank you to Rich the TT. Thank you very much. And thank you to our patrons of the arts. Thank you to Hugh Mark with a C, <laughs> the encaffeinated one. Uh, and Susanna, thank you so much. And to all of our other patrons, our uh, lifeblood of this campaign, thank you to Shane, Selgenor, Cliff, Grig, Harold, Ian, Ken, Kinsey, Melissa, Mike, Nix, Radical Geek, Will, and Zachman. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Love you guys. Yeah, you're the best. Nutty Bites is produced by Nimla Studios under a Creative Commons Attribution No Commercial Non-Derivatives 3.0 International License. That means you can't change it without my permission. You can share it and send it to your friends. Just link back to me, my site, and everything. We live at nimlas.org, which has links to everything social media, including facebook.com slash group slash Nutty Bites and patreon.com slash nukejoss or call 347-Nutty42. 